Hi, Chris Bellaton here from Bethel Church in Redding, California. And I'm here with Elizabeth Wanning, and she's from the Change Movement. And we're going to talk about the Equality Act. Yeah. Now, I want you to know who's talking about the Equality Act here, because you live a life, you were formerly a lesbian, mm -hmm. a quote, Christian lesbian. Yeah. And so you, you're very much in the, in the gay lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Had an encounter with God, which you've told many times, and by the way, they can get under Change Movement. Yeah, you can find my website. bio there and find out all about that. It's a crazy, amazing God story. Beautiful story. Actually, it was a prophetic word that brought me into a revelation of Jesus that started the trajectory out of the lifestyle. And so you have a great heart for those people because you were one of those people. Mm -hmm. So you understand the the nuances of that, of that whole movement, uh, call it movement, the gay movement but also just the plight of those folks and what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And now we have some legislation that has just passed the House, you told me. That's right. Around this Equality Act. Why don't you tell us what is the Equality Act, first of all, in just a condensed version. What is the Equality Act? Well, it's a piece of legislation that is focused on anti-discrimination. Okay. So it really... Which we're for, anti-discrimination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really centers on the Civil Rights Bill of 1964 and builds on that to add LGBTQ as a people group that's represented in that Civil Rights Bill. But um, in the same way you would uh, have an ethnic group though, right? Mm -hmm. So it'd be right. the same way as it would protect like Blacks or Asians or Hispanics or so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the LGBTQ, so the basics of this are Identifying um, homosexuality, bisexuality, uh, although all all the sexualities, as a people group in that almost like as if it was genetic, right? Is that true? Mm -hmm. Am I yeah, exaggerating right. that? No, that's right. And and that that's problematic for what reasons? Well, for a variety of reasons. I mean, we can't. I think backing up, it's problematic yeah. just because. Um, LGBT identity is totally subjective. Yeah. So it's I self-identify. It's not genetic. No, it's not genetic. Mm -hmm. um, scientifically, we know that uh, any kind of genetic studies that have been done have all come up inconclusive. Yeah. So we have years of studies that say it's not genetic. So it's a, it's a choice you make. And of course, you were in that world. And we want to say the church has been way less than compassionate towards these folks, which has been a problem. Mm -hmm, yeah. So this is a, this is a problem. We, these people need to be loved. They need to be helped. But at the same time, we do need to realize that this is a choice that you make. It's a, I, I, I say it this way, it's a temptation you give into. Yeah. I mean, I think saying it's a choice, it doesn't feel like a choice. Okay, great. You know, why I don't mean, you articulate it, that? It, it, it feels like, I mean, for most of it, it feels, most of us, it feels like we were born this way. Many of mm -hmm. us can remember our childhood experiences and often um, have, can remember sexualizing our peer-to-peer -peer relationships. Got it. So it doesn't feel like a choice. What you do with it, though, certainly is a choice. Yeah. And so let's talk uh, about the legislation. What is the impact of the Equality Act on society? As with, in the Civil Rights Bill of the 60s, it forced society to make changes that uh, were not that society was not embracing okay okay so if we think about conditions in the 60s the civil rights bill came along and really demanded that african americans be uh, treated differently than they were being treated and that should have it, it should exactly have. Mm -hmm. um, with the equality act um, there are dis there is discrimination going on okay um, but our culture at the same time is moving very quickly towards complete embrace of LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. So like today, um, we have CEOs of some of the largest companies in the world that are gay. Yeah. In the 1964s, so that, was, yeah. that wasn't happening yeah, with the African-American community. So even we have senators, we have representatives who all are on the spectrum of LGBTQ. And so there are opportunities available already. Great. So, right? so we're not, we're talking about the Equality Act and creating equality. We're not talking about necessarily like jobs. We're saying your CEOs that are, a a Apple I think is a is a good example of a CEO is run by a person who identifies as gay, running a, a complete, um, you know, beautiful Apple corporation that we all love. Mm -hmm. And so how does the Equality Act 
So how does the Equality Act quote help the LGBTQ and, and what, is, what are our issues with it in particular? Uh, well, I mean, it identifies places of discrimination that are real, that are still happening, for example, with employment, okay. with housing. Um, they can identify areas where still it's hard, you know, in certain neighborhoods, for example, if I showed up with my lesbian wife, it might be hard for me to get a job in that community or it might Got be it. hard for me to get housing. And so the Equality Act focuses on those places where discrimination okay. is happening. The problem is that um, this blank, this sweeping idea of equality will present to the U.S. confusion about sex and gender and the distinctions between the two and really brings um, gender theory into play into our national law. And gender theory seeks to say essentially men and women are interchangeable yeah and 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 that i feel like i, I have a lot of passion in this area because obviously um talking about family mm -hmm. and uh, and you know we are we we're in california we're broadcasting for california we live in california and last year or two years ago we have in our school system has was uh, introduced genderless curriculum which mm -hmm. basically is telling children um, your your gender is not biological and, and and if it is even if it is you can choose other than that mm -hmm. and so um, th they're right there you have confusion exactly and then this you know and and a part a part of what I think is behind this and feel free to disagree is uh, the LGBTQ community wants to the de the deconstruction of the family so they can reconstruct a family around their ideas, which it does, you know, you can have two mommies, you can have two daddies. Mommies and daddies are interchangeable, genders are interchangeable. And as you just pointed out, they're not recognizing that, no, there is such thing as a, a man and, and a husband and a father and a, a, a woman, a, a wife and a mother. They're not the same thing, they're not interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a big part of the challenge that we have with the LGBTQ in that then the Equality Act is actually making that law in that we can no longer, there's no such thing as gender distinctions anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly confusing for our kids. I mean, the biggest thing, uh, we're watching in California, comprehensive sex ed unfold and it is indoctrinating children. Yes. And so now what we're doing is we're taking that same mentality um, and placing it over the entire nation. Yeah, so what's happening in California is being federalized, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, an, this is another issue that you're very passionate about in that, because you identified as a, a lesbian, uh, Ken Williams identified for a season as a, as a homosexual guy, and uh, Ken went and got help. You eventually got help from the Lord. Mm -hmm. But uh, what one of the things that this Equality Act is doing is taking away help for people. If mm -hmm. you're, let's say, your daughter or son, uh, underage child wants to is identifying as LGBTQ and and needs help, and you want them to have help, or even they want to get help, there will be no help available, right? Because That's right. It, the only choice will be to affirm them in that LGBT identity. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what's interesting that's happening right now in our culture is over the, so from my generation, I'm, I'm 50, um, consistently over my lifetime until the last 15 years, the population in the U.S. of LGBT identifying people has been under 3%. Yes. Okay. In the last eight years, so a few weeks ago, Gallup released a poll. And in the last eight years, the number of people identifying as LGBTQ has increased 60%. Well, that's, that's, that's crazy. Uh, you're giving, you're telling little kids, you're beginning to train little kids, hey, I have uh, same-sex attraction, same, I call it same sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, oh, that's, that's normal. It's, it's all good. So there's no reason to um, even work that out. I'm not even talking about with a counselor right now. I'm just talking about in myself. It, it, if I was raised in a home that uh, believed that you can you sh you should have sex before you're married and there's there's a high likelihood I'm, I'm going to do that like mm -hmm. yeah. irresponsibly no boundaries, no boundaries. so um, that that's really good now well, may I ask so yeah. or may I say that so coming back to what the bill does a, a minor who's questioning his sexuality um, should be allowed to get counseling 
during that process. Absolutely. Right? And in the majority of states, or in many states right now, like for example California, yeah. it's illegal to offer a minor any kind of professional licensed counseling while they're in that questioning process that would affirm them in their biological sex. Can you imagine, if you're watching this, you have a child that is a boy and thinks that he's a girl or vice versa, and you're like, what do I do? You literally, if you live in California, you have to leave the state to get your son or daughter help with what used to be called gender dysphoria. Well, and you know, studies are showing that surgeries and procedures um, do not do not resolve suicidality. Mm -hmm. So the suicide rate for the transgender community is 19 times higher than the rest of the population. Yeah. Now let's talk about the women's rights issues because this is this is far reaching. What yeah. happens when a transgender, especially on this side, a transgender, a, a male who transgenders to a woman mm -hmm. suddenly can run in races and can compete with women uh, mm -hmm. I mean, if if it, if this doesn't get stopped, it could, they could compete with women in the Olympics or in. It's, it's the end of Title IX protections. Yeah. So um, you know, Title IX created women's sports. Yeah. And created special opportunities for women, like um, SBA loans for women entrepreneurs and other things. Um, now allowing biological men into those arenas, there's no more Title IX. Like right now, I think this is true that um, the fastest woman, the record-setting Olympiad, Olympiad woman um, runner, yes, that world record can be beaten by a high school-aged man. Yeah, because men are typically, and this is a broad statement, they're typically 12% faster and they're 15% stronger when, when we're talking about uh, you know equal to equal in, in uh, Olympics and sports and so on and so forth. So you're, you're taking women and you're taking away the rights of women, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the same is true, you know, a big, another common discussion point that people will have heard about is bringing a biological male into a women's shelter. Um, there are situations yeah. where men have attacked women in those settings. Yeah. Um, and now coming back to the man who identifies as a woman, um, when he's trying to get help in a shelter, he needs help. Yeah, exactly. Okay? And there, he, he's not going to go to a men's shelter, that transgender woman, that man, yeah. he's not going to go to a men's shelter, that's not safe for him. Yeah. And going to a women's shelter, that's not safe for the women. Yeah. So there's a really dramatic conundrum there. It's I mean, there are so many comorbidities with uh, transgender identity. Um, it really, America needs to take a pause. The American Psychological Association needs to take a pause and consider what, how much harm they're bringing to that community. Yeah, and you know, all under the guise of equal opportunity. And, mm -hmm. and of course, as you pointed out in the opening statements, there are places that need equal opportunity, but this bill isn't that bill. No, at, because at the thing about the worst thing about the bill in that regard, mm -hmm. with the discrimination element, is that it's, it adds all the rest of the stuff to it. Yeah. So that you have to you have to pass the whole thing: restrictions on counseling, um, allowance, the d diminishment of Title IX rights, etc. Yeah. You have to approve of the whole thing. You don't get to just isolate the um, employment. Yeah, discrimination work discrimination or, or some accommodations. Yeah, something like that. So, how is this Equality Act going to affect? Um, the church and the whole religious culture of America. Yeah, one of the one of the primary places that is very problematic for Christians is that it explicitly um, removes the protections of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. That's called RIFRA. Okay. So RIFRA, what it does is it ensures that the federal government cannot discriminate against Christians. Got it. Okay. And so it, for it, those of us, for example, for example, that think homosexuality is wrong, mm -hmm. uh, and that um, and that 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 should not be uh, perpetuated to the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, in employment, it would require that a that a church give preference to, if possible, someone who identifies as LGBTQ to their staff positions. Wow. Okay. And you wouldn't be able to make a behavioral stipulation on that. And so that's that's a major part of the bill, and and of course because the LGBTQ community identifies that sexual uh, moral ethics in a Christian 
setting are often opposed to their values. Um, and then in addition to that, um, this bill would actually, because it mandates medical procedures for transgender identifying people, ma it mandates federal funding for that kind of care, it would remove the Hyde Amendment. And, and so this actually directly affects how abortion is funded. The Hyde Amendment, oh, wow. the Hyde Amendment makes, it ensures that federal funding can't go to abortion clinics. So now the, this bill would require federal funding to go to medical procedures that would remove the restrictions of the Hyde Amendment. Oh, well, this is this is uh, this is really That's huge. crazy and huge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a call to action. Let's talk about what <laughs> what do you do? Like for a lot of Americans, that, uh, Christians who are watching this, they're like, oh my gosh, I just feel so overwhelmed. Like this is happening mm -hmm. every day. You can't you can't hardly watch the news without another bill being passed or trying to be passed. For those of us in California, it can be overwhelming. You got to start somewhere, though. Well, I mean, an easy place to start is to go research your senator. Mm -hmm. So you can go to the federal government's Congress congressional site mm -hmm. for the Senate, and you'll see a drop-down menu menu for your state. It'll help you identify your senators, and then when you get to the senator page on that mm -hmm. website, just click contact, and a form will come up. Fill out that form, and all you really need to tell them is very briefly that you oppose the bill. Yeah. and that you'd like your senator to represent you by also opposing the bill. Yeah, and we'll have we'll have a link to that mm -hmm. on our uh, on our on our pages. You can go to changedmovement.com/takeaction um, and get directly to that site and also all the details that we've been talking about are isolated on those pages as well. Yeah. So again, I think what's really important here, we're talking about if you can let your senator know you're in my district, you're in my region, mm -hmm. and uh, please oppose this bill. That, that's all you have to say. It's, it's, it's 25 seconds, 30 yeah. seconds. You know, if you want to be more ambitious, you can call their office. You there can you try to arrange, you could call and arrange a, a, an actual meeting with a staffer and tell yeah. them how you feel. All those things are possible, but by far the simplest is that form. Yeah, there was a, a bill that was, there was actually three bills being passed. I think this is about three years ago in California around the transgender issue that we just discussed uh, a little while ago. And we asked people to, uh, in our congregation, can you please make a call? And this was just a simple pick up the phone and call. Yeah. And uh, 30, they got 3,700 calls in one day and they said that registered the most calls in their history. Yeah. And they pulled those bills. So it, it actually does work. Like the most powerful thing you can do right now around this Equality Act is simply to make your voice heard. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I mean, it's not a time to be silent. And it's not, you may think that your voice doesn't matter, but all our voices together does actually matter. Yeah, and you know, senators and commerce people, all of those political people, um, you know, basically it's a government by the people. And so when they know that people in their area, in their district, in their region, actually don't want them to vote for this, that's the most profound, powerful thing you can do. Yeah. And so um, please do that. Get on the link, call your senator. Again, if you want to call, it's a 20 second call. If you want to just uh, email, the address will be there. It's, it's just, um, I don't agree with the call yet. Please vote against it. I'm in your district. That's it. That's it. It's that simple. Uh, there's no argument. You're not going to argue with somebody. You're going to share your opinion and it's and profoundly powerful. Yeah. Elizabeth? Thank you so very much for being on. Well, thanks for letting me come. And God bless everything that you guys are doing. Thank you.